First, I think what's interesting with Wilms tumor one or WT1, um, it's a fetal oncoprotein. And um, as such, um, it's a nuclear transcription factor, um, a true oncogene, which is not druggable um, with standard pharmacologic approaches such as small molecules or antibodies. And what's also interesting is that it's overexpressed in, in a wide um, variety of tumor types, about 20 of them, while it's not found appreciably in healthy adult tissues. And um, um, I think the core uh, um, behind Wilms tumor 1 or WT1 is really in some uh, ways that, that it's, it's densely expressed and subsequently processed within cancer cells and, and with its various peptide fragments, it's then being presented on the surface of the cancer cells, which is bound on HLA class one molecule. So um, the National Cancer Institute actually ranked it as the number one immunotherapy target to go after, uh, uh, after our priori selected criteria. And uh, um, so GPS, before I talk about the clinical data, if I may, it, it's a mixture of engineered um, and artificially mutated peptides. And, and we use what's called the heteroclitic technology, which is basically by design mutated amino acid um, uh, uh, mutations of the frequencies and, 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 and its alterations. And we address 25 WT1 optimally selected epitopes. Why is that important? Um, as you know, it's, uh, it's important to mount immune response. Many immunotherapy and cancer vaccines only elicit what's called a CD8 cytotoxic T cell response, as you know. The problem with CD8 only is that they're short-lived. Unless you have the helper and the memory cells, the so-called CD4s, um, it, it's not going to really be able to, uh, um, to do much of the work. So our technology elicits both CD4, CD8 uh, uh, immune responses, four peptides, 25 carefully selected epitopes. We have multiple shots on the goal, if you will, to elicit an immune response. And our lead program, coming to the clinical data now, if I may, um, our lead program in acute myeloid leukemia, um, we are in a pivotal phase three study uh, uh, in patients after second remission. I think, again, what is important to understand is that the majority of acute myeloid leukemia patients are 60 years and older. Um, unfortunately, the majority of those patients um, cannot undergo bone marrow transplant. Um, at the best centers, somewhere between 3 to 12 percent or so of the patients uh, um, do get transplanted, but the vast majority cannot for various reasons. And uh, um, so if you are in what's called the first complete remission, the median overall survival for 60 years and older patients is 10 to 16 months. When you're in the second remission, the median overall survival with best available therapy is three to six months. So in our studies in acute myeloid leukemia, in patients after first remission, as I mentioned before, with best available therapy, they ordinarily have a median overall survival of 10 to 16 months. We have shown a 35-month median overall survival in our phase two study. And in the CR2 patients, in patients in the second remission, where ordinarily patients would have an overall survival of three to six months, we showed a 21 month median overall survival versus 5.4 in the control arm. So clinically and statistically significant. And we're now in, in the phase three program in patients in second remission. And uh, um, the study is ongoing. We expect the first uh, set of data uh, and analysis in the first half of, um, of next year. Um, and you know we're obviously very, um, very excited with the, uh, with the program. Most importantly, because I believe, uh, um, you know, we, we, we're, we're entering a stage in, in, the, in the maintenance setting where nothing is approved. Um, there's been a lot of drugs in development and approved in acute leukemia uh, to get patients into remission, which is wonderful, but it has really not moved the needle in overall survival. So we're just really excited to, to, to hopefully, uh, um, you know, provide a solution to patients and physicians alike with, with GPS. Um, Maybe one additional point around acute myeloid leukemia and across the indications is our safety profile and the administration. The administration is very similar to a flu shot or COVID vaccine shot, subcutaneous injection. Patients undergo treatment every other week for four months, and then we do monthly and quarterly booster injections. Um, the tolerability profile, very similar to a flu shot. You, you're in and out of the, um, of the doctor's office. You can go about your, your, your daily routine. And uh, um, so as a monotherapy, 
uh, um, in leukemia, uh, we go after patients in complete remission. I think that's that's very important to to note. We're not going into deep bulk disease. Um, that's not what our drug is meant to do. Uh, just like a, um, a flu shot, if you have the flu, the flu vaccine wouldn't really do you any good. The same is true with the COVID. So once you're in remission, we come in and we basically provide immunosurveillance to your body. Uh, and if the cancer cells come back, you now elicit the CD4, CD8 response against the WT1 uh, and cancer cells to prolong survival ultimately. So that's, that's the study in, in, in leukemia. We've also done studies in, in mesothelioma and in multiple myeloma um, uh, with really exciting data and went after uh, um, bad disease states. In, in mesothelioma, our phase two study showed close to a five and a half month survival benefit versus the control arm. And then in multiple myeloma, uh, which again uh, um, is, is, a, is, is, is a hematological malignancy, um, 15 out of 18 patients at high risk cytogenetics who typically would relapse within about uh, uh, 12 months and we prolonged progression-free survival to two years. Um, so in, 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 in myeloma, we also had uh, positive data and, and that has sort of led us to, um, as I mentioned before, to a collaboration agreement with Merck um, where we're combining um, GPS with Keytruda with uh, a Merck's uh, a checkpoint uh, a blockade. And uh, um, perhaps before I talk about that study in, in, in ovarian cancer, we have done another study in ovarian cancer, but combining GPS with Bristol-Myers PD-1 with Opdivo. And uh, um, this was in, 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 in patients with recurrent ovarian cancer uh, who were in second or greater clinical remission. Uh, typically, uh, uh, and with a median follow-up of 33 months, what you would ordinarily expect is that three to 10% of the women um, um, at two years would be progression-free. In our study, we actually increased that to 30%. So 30% of the women at two years were progression-free. And that's, that led to the current study that is ongoing, where we expect uh, a further mature data uh, um, in the first half of next year. Um, uh, um, and, and that is in, in, in uh, um, again, in, in, in women with ovarian cancer. We had shown some very interesting uh, data very recently. And I think what's important is that um, the median overall survival in our current study has not been reached. So all patients are alive. Um, that has been in, in 11 invaluable patients. And uh, um, as I mentioned before, this is in platinum resistant um, advanced ovarian cancer. And typically, the overall survival for those patients is in between nine to 12 months. Although we have not reached median overall survival because all patients are alive, we have already exceeded that nine-month threshold, which is, which is fantastic. We've also shown very intriguing progression-free survival data, as well as really strong immune um, response data. Uh, and, and similarly, in the mesothelioma study that is ongoing with Bristol-Myers PD-1, of Devo, that is. We've also shown some very intriguing uh, data in a smaller uh, uh, number of patients thus far in four valuable patients. And we have shown a median overall survival of 35 weeks. And the median overall survival in relapse refractory patients in that setting is typically around 16 to 28 weeks. Um, so I think overall, obviously very uh, I'm excited with the prospect of, 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 of GPS. Um, and um, 2022 should be a very exciting year for sellers because we expect a lot of data readouts from our uh, um, collaboration study with Merck in ovarian cancer and mesothelioma, and very importantly, our pivotal phase three study in acute myeloid leukemia.